It's a zombie-infested post-apocalyptic world where humans are on the verge of extinction. This military base, surrounded by zombies, is the last bastion of mankind. These zombie children are the last hope of developing an antidote to the virus, except for their bloodlust. They are basically the same as humans. In order to domesticate them, the humans tied them to chairs and forced them to learn about humans. One of them, a little zombie girl named Melanie, has an intelligence far beyond that of a normal human. Melanie moved her teacher, Helen, to tears with a story she told in just three minutes. Helen thinks that these little zombies are no different from humans. Helen unconsciously stroked Melanie's hair. Sergeant, Eddie came in to stop her and told her that a zombie will always be a zombie. When they get close to people, they lose their minds. And to prove the point, Sergeant, Eddie spits on his arm, wipes the barrier gel off, and puts his arm in front of the zombie. It didn't take long for the zombie to get violent. <laughs> the rest of the zombies have shown their true colors. Only Melanie kept her desires in check. That day, Melanie was pushed out of the base by Sergeant, Eddie alone. It was her first time to see the outside world. Countless zombies came and surrounded the whole base. The soldiers are trying their best to resist the attack. It's clear they don't have much time left. Sergeant, Eddie pushed Melanie into the lab. Melanie's excellent performance has Dr. Jean on her trail. Dr. Jean told her that the only way we could find the antidote to the virus was to dissect you. After being anesthetized, Melanie was carried to the operating table, just as the experiment was about to begin. Helen came to try and stop Dr. Jean, but she was sprayed with pepper spray. Dr. Jean called the soldiers to take her away by force. And then that air raid siren sounded outside. That means the zombies had broken through the defense line. Dr. Jean ordered her assistant to seal off the place and not to open the door no matter what happened. When the assistant was about to close the curtains, she didn't realize that a zombie was running towards the window. <laughs> Dr. Jean raises the fire extinguisher and throws it at the zombie. Then, she picks up a shard of glass on the floor and stabs it. Although she killed the zombie, her hand was also injured. At that moment, the assistant next to her started to mutate and jump towards Dr. Jean. Dr. Jean rushed into the house, leaving Melanie alone, but the zombies don't seem to be interested in their own kind. Melanie used a scalpel to cut the rope and escape from the lab, but she was shocked by the scene around her. The human base has been completely overrun by zombies. The only remaining soldiers are making their last stand. In the chaos, Melanie saw Miz. Helen being attacked by the soldiers, she angrily rushed up and hugged one of the soldiers, biting him frantically, and then pounced on the other soldier. The bitten soldiers soon began to mutate. Melanie fainted because she was not used to eating meat for the first time. Helen carried her and prepared to leave, but the surrounding zombies made her feel desperate. With the help of Sergeant, Eddie, Helen and Melanie managed to escape. Countless zombies are chasing them behind the armored car. The armored car soon drove into the woods. While fetching water from the river, a soldier heard a little noise and fired a few shots into the woods. Sergeant, Eddie asked him why he didn't put a silencer on it. The sound of the gunshots attracted a lot of zombies. They had to fight and retreat. During the retreat, the soldier was bitten by a zombie. Sergeant, Eddie had to shoot him to be safe. But during the battle, the bullet hit the fuel line of the armored car and the car stopped. They have no choice but to go to a safe place on foot. Although there are zombies everywhere, there is plenty of food. Soon they reach the edge of the city. Sergeant, Eddie looks through his binoculars and realizes that it's filled with zombies. Luckily, they're all dormant. They are coated with odor blocking gel. So as long as they don't make too much noise, they can't safely pass through the zombies. But when they get to the middle of the building, they realize that the zombies in front of them are getting denser. They're walking cautiously. Just then, a lactating female zombie pushes a stroller with what appears to be a moving baby inside. Dr. Jean became curious and immediately blocked the wheels of the stroller with her feet. At the same time, she lifted the quilt, but Dr. Jean screamed out in terror and woke up the zombies. Sergeant, Eddie had no choice but to shoot her. That shot set off a chain reaction. Luckily, not many zombies were awakened this time. With Sergeant, Eddie's cover, they safely hid inside a building. In order to eliminate the danger, Miss, Helen and Sergeant, Eddie split up to check out the building, while Dr. Jean and Melanie stayed in the same place. Melanie asked Dr. Jean how she got here. Dr. Jean said at the beginning of the outbreak, some pregnant women were infected by the zombie virus. The mothers passed the virus onto their babies. The babies fed on their mother's entrails and crawled out of their mother's bellies as they grew. But zombie babies are different from other zombies. They have a natural immune system and are half human, half zombie. After one night, there are more and more zombies outside. 
It's almost impossible to get through here. Melanie volunteered to distract them and promise not to run away. But Melanie had just stepped outside when she saw a black kid running past. This instantly aroused Melanie's zombie nature. She quickly ran up and grabbed the cat and ate it up. Then she found a dog and used it to lure all the zombies away. But the people in the room weren't happy about it. They could tell by the blood on Melanie's mouth that she just had a good meal. The soldiers cautiously held her at gunpoint and put her by guard on again. As they continued on their way, they saw many strange sights along the way. Underneath a tall building, thousands of corpses are gathered. The vines wrapped around their corpses were feeding on the corpses and crawling all over the building and produced countless spores and fruits. Dr. Jean explained that this is the next stage of the zombie virus. These fruits are filled with viral powder and once fully bloomed, the virus was spread through the air. That's the end of the world. But luckily, these fruits are so hard, they can't be broken by smashing them against the ground. On their way, they found a mobile lab. All the facilities in this lab are functioning properly. So they can't stay here for a while. After a brief restoration, the soldier went out to look for supplies. And Melanie was hungry. The blocking gel on the humans had lost its effect. Melanie could smell them to be safe. Sergeant, Addie decided to let her out to look for food. She caught a pigeon on the rooftop. After Melanie had her fill, she seemed to sense something. She followed her senses to a house, where she found a bunch of zombie kids just like her. One of the pups told the boss that it had found food. Melanie realizes that the soldier may be in trouble. She quickly went back to the lab to tell Sergeant Eddie about it. At that moment, the soldier is walking towards the trap set by the zombie. The soldier followed the guns on the floor to the entrance of the supermarket, whose roller shutter was only slightly open. This resulted in him having to drop his gear and climb in. This also made it impossible for Sergeant Addie to contact him. Inside the supermarket, there was indeed a lot of food. The soldier ate his fill and then read some pornographic magazines. Then a kid popped up behind him with a little mouse in his hand. He didn't know the kid was a zombie, so he didn't get alarmed and went over to greet her. But then he was attacked by them and fell to the ground with the cuts on his feet. The soldier then realized that he was ambushed by the zombies. He took out a grenade from his pocket to scare them, but the zombies didn't know what it was and they all rushed up and ate the soldier. By the time Melanie and the others arrived, the soldier was already stiff. When they came out again, they were surrounded by zombies. So it's another trap. Sergeant, Eddie wanted to shoot them, but Melanie stopped him. She says she's going to solve the problem her way. A zombie was slapped by Melanie and fell to the ground. Then she shocked them with her power. The leer of the zombies felt threatened. The two of them soon got into a tussle. While they were struggling on the ground, Melanie found a chance to lock the leader in handcuffs. Then she grabbed a baseball bat and beat him to death. The zombies backed away when the leader was dead. When they returned to the lab, they saw Dr. Jean with an oxygen mask pointing a gun at them. The three of them just reacted to the poisonous gas released by Dr. Jean and got knocked out. It turns out that Dr. Jean has never given up dissecting Melanie as an experiment. After all, developing the antidote is her mission, but she still underestimated Melanie. Her special physical condition allows her not to breathe so often. Dr. Jean asked, if you want Miss Helen to become a zombie, I guess you don't want her to become a monster, do you? And I can save her and even all of humanity, but you have to sacrifice yourself. Melanie seemed to be starting to waver. She can't sacrifice herself for her teacher, but what's wrong with those kids out there? They just want to live. Since I'm a zombie, I'm not the same race as humans. Why should I help the humans? Melanie left the lab without hesitation. Dr. Jean followed her, but she didn't get very far before the little ones ate her on the road. Melanie made her way to a building full of vines. She used a fire to ignite the vines with a virus. The fire spreads instantly, and the virus fruit explodes in the heat, spreading the virus through the air and across the world. On her way back, Melanie meets Sergeant Eddie, who wakes up. Apparently he has absorbed the virus in the air and is slowly mutating. Sergeant Eddie says he doesn't want to become a zombie and tells Melanie to shoot him. Mr. Helen was in the lab the whole time, so she didn't get infected by the virus. At the end of the movie, Melanie gathered all the zombies together. Miss Helen continues to teach the zombie kids in the lab, teaching them the knowledge of humans. Melanie has become the overseer of order. She's about to create a whole new zombie civilization.